Laplace said it best when he stated, probability is common sense reduced to calculation. Love it or hate it, this is one topic you will encounter every step of the way. Let's say you're stuck in this huge traffic jam. What is the probability you'll make it to the event in time? Or, you finally discovered the most innovative way to propose to your girlfriend. What's the probability it'll all work out? So, in conclusion, when we consider all the variables and weigh them uh, here against the power of love, or you can call it uh, uh, the... Um Probability has various applications in industry. Take for example your mobile phones. How many times has a line got cut or disconnected when you tried making a call? Research indicates that if this were to happen 50% of the time, people would simply throw their phones in the bin. So we use probability to ensure that the disconnection rate is so low, one in a million, to prevent mass junking of phones. Another example could be weather forecasting. What is the probability it's going to be bright and sunny tomorrow? Let's see what our TV anchor has to say. The long range forecast for today predicts rain and sunshine and even fog and high winds. We wouldn't go wrong this time around, I bet you. Assuming you have a basic understanding of probabilities from all the coin throwing and dice rolling and choosing red or green balls from a basket, let's build on it by introducing a new concept which deals with probability of two or more outcomes. But before we do, I want to make one very important distinction when dealing with multiple events. Suppose the Coast Guard had placed a net one kilometer from the beach to prevent sharks from getting through. The probability that one shark can get through this net is 5%. Now let's assume there are 300 sharks in the coast area. So what is the probability that any of these 300 sharks could get through the net and reach the shore, assuming the fate of each shark is independent of the other? Now this is what some people might do. The probability of one shark getting through is 5%, so probability of 300 sharks getting through is 305%, which is 1500%. Wow, so there's a 1500% chance that a shark might get through the net, right? No, that's not the way it works. Remember that the fate of each shark is independent from the other, which means that regardless of whether we have 5 or 500 sharks, it doesn't increase the likeliness of a shark getting through. One of the important factors that you need to take into account as you start dealing in depth with probability is whether the events you're looking at are independent, dependent, or mutually exclusive. Let's see what each of these mean. Dependent events happen when one event is affected by the other. If I have to calculate the probability that there will be less than 100 people in a subway train when I commute from station A to station B, the time of the day when I commute would affect its likelihood. During peak times, you will witness a huge rush and during non-peak times, an empty train. So number of people traveling in a subway train and the timing of the commute are dependent events. Mutually exclusive events mean that if event A happens, then event B cannot and vice versa. The two events, it rained today and it did not rain today, are mutually exclusive events. The probability that both A and B occur together is zero, since it cannot possibly rain and not rain on the same day, right? Independent events occur when the outcome of event A has absolutely no effect on the outcome of event B. Consider these two events. <laughs> It will rain today and I will get a pay raise today. They're completely unrelated. When calculating the probabilities for independent events, you find the probability of each event separately and then multiply them as we're effectively saying, what is the chance of both events happening, keeping in mind that the outcome of one has no bearing on the outcome of the other.